Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. Remember when the 5KX came out from Seiko, uh, no screw down crown, water resistance went from 200 meters to 100 meters. Uh, a lot of people, I guess, kind of got turned off by that. It lost the ISO 6425 rating, et cetera. And then I guess when the SSK models came out, which one of them was a bestseller for the store in 2023, I'll leave a link to that video. Uh, those similarly, uh, push pull crown, but they added uh, 100 meters of water resistance, but they added the GMT feature. Of course, now Islander is going to pick up where they maybe should have picked up. I have my first, I don't want to call it an SKX GMT, but that's pretty much what it is. It's like the original Islander, ISL 01, 02, 03, 04. Uh, the 05 was a 38 millimeter. And I basically done those in a GMT format. We've reached back and pulled out the waffle dials that were very popular. That was ISL 88, 89, and 90. We've gmt affied them four styles to show you. We will get into them for my own wrist check. Um, let's see, one purchase from 2023. This was my uh, yellow, uh, uh, Cass I almost say Seiko, uh, Cassioke. And on my other wrist, I believe this was a 2022 acquisition, my 8-bit uh, from Brew. Been playing some Pac-Man lately on a console that I got, so feeling in the 8-bit mood. Waffles. So here we are. I know people are looking for a name or wondering what I'm going to call it. Well, it's just going to be 43mm Waffle GMTs or 42mm Waffle GMTs, whatever. When you measure the SKX case, it really depends where you grab it. But you guys know what it is. It is SKX 007 compliant Waffle GMTs. Here we go. ISL, I want to say 213, 214, 215, and 225. All of them will be the same price. They all share similar specs, but not necessarily materials. They don't all have steel bezels. Um, but they all have beautiful, beautiful waffle dials. So let's get into it. We are looking at uh, a 42, 43 millimeter case. It's going to be 14 thick uh, to the tip of the bezel. The crystal is sticks out just barely a millimeter. Uh, it is a double dome sapphire with inner AR. It is 46 millimeters on the lug tip to lug tip, and you do spot all of them use female end links. Really cool. There are some different bracelets, and you'll see them all, all the, uh, the what bracelet goes with what watch in a couple of minutes. Obviously, it's running on Seiko's NH34, which hand winds hacks GMT. It's a caller or a office GMT. Uh, meaning that you adjust the GMT hand independently of the minutes and hours, and uh, it's more of like a static as opposed to a traveler's GMT, which is where you quick adjust the hour hand on the 12-hour scale. I've done videos on that as well, but it still is a true GMT in that this hand is independently settable of this time zone. Uh, solid screw-down case back with the Islander Lighthouse embossed. Uh, it is brushed. The case itself is a combination of brushing and polishing. Extra large crown at three. Easy to grab, just like our old, older waffle GMTs, as I mentioned, the ISL 88, 89, and 90. Uh, 200 meters of water resistance, weighs about 175 grams on the bracelet. This bracelet, all the bracelets you're going to see today are missing two links, uh, simply because they were already sized for the photographer. When you see the photographer's wrist on our website, uh, he does have about a 7-inch wrist, so keep that in mind. A little over 7. Uh, let's see. 349 bucks for any of them. It is. So now it's getting into the... Well, let's pull in on the dial first. So I think you see that really, really cool dial. Waffle pattern. This one is a silver whitish color. It's definitely more white than silver. As I go off angle, you can see it. And when I face it dead at the camera which I probably shouldn't because they're a little bit too bright, but it looks really, really nice. Silver hands, silver indices, orange accenting GMT hand matches the orange triangle 12. The bezel is indeed bi-directional. Clicking into place, you can set your time zone functionality. Crown, unscrew, it pops. Wind it, 40 hours of power reserve. Pull it out two clicks, change the time. Notice when I change the time, the GMT hand moves half as fast. GMT's hand, GMT hands revolve uh, once per day. Pull the crown out one click, 
one direction changes the GMT hand in one hour increments as read on the GMT scale on the bezel. And the other direction will change the date. I should note that the chapter ring also has its own GMT scale. So really, you can be recording three time zones with this local by the 12 hour hands. Uh, a time zone pointing that the GMT hand is reading off the rehort or the chapter ring and then one that is being read off the bezel if you should desire. Um, let's see. I, I glossed over the bracelet. It's 22 millimeter. Bracelet goes from 22 to 18 at the clasp. Ah, the clasp it might be the best part. I almost skipped it. Solid link, solid end link, of course, size with screws. Beautiful clasp. This is a new clasp that we're doing on some models. Um, people have been, you, have been asking for us to do a toolless micro adjust. So this is it. It's a double push button. Look at the perlage on the inside. It's pretty cool, right? That's called perlage, by the way, those round machine circles. And then when you're wearing it, you pull these two ears down and you have six positions of micro adjust. Okay. Really, really nice. It's not really a diver's extension, though I guess you could use it as such. It is a toolless micro uh, that is included here. There we go. You push it back in, and it is secure. Uh, will we use this clasp more on future designs? Possibly. I do need to be brutally honest with you. This clasp is damn expensive compared to, um, I don't have one of the, the three position flip locks are basically free compared to this. It's orders of magnitude in, in, in differential. And then when you go from manufacture to cost, uh, manufacture to sell, it really increases the price a decent chunk. So the other remaining three are the same size specs, just differing in the colorway and then the bracelet. We're using two different kinds of bracelets. So you saw that bracelet on the first one. This is the bracelet on the second one. Standard three link fair, 22 by 18, same clasp. Uh, I should note that no, we do not have the bracelet separately at this point. No, you cannot, we cannot ship you this one with this bracelet. I get that question a lot. I don't think any other manufacturer gets that question. I get it daily. It's just not possible. I don't have these bracelets stocked, ready to go. And it's not just as easy as swapping because then it creates a whole separate logistics issue. So this is, this was actually a surprise, surprisingly for me, popular watch. This was a takeoff of the ISL 88 now. Uh, that watch did very well. It is a gilt with a yellow gold tone bezel hands indices. Loom we'll get to at the end. They'll have slightly different loom. Uh, the GMT hand on this is red, matching the red triangle. I think the red works really well. Look at that beautiful black waffle texture. You can see the GMT automatic 200 meters of water resistance and then the movement NH34 is emblazoned on the bottom of the dial. Really swell looking. As I said, this one did better than I thought it would um, in the non-GMT version. So when we brought it back, uh, we figured, hey, let's do the same one again. Actually, the first three that you're going to see are basically those waffle dials, except we've gmt sized them or affied them. You know, comparing these to the Seiko SSK going out street price at 380, at 350, this uh, it is a pretty good bargain. Um, I probably could have gone more expensive. Uh, I didn't want to. Uh, I don't know. Business decisions for another day. Uh, so this is the blue dial. This might be my favorite, though. I really like it. I like all three. The fourth one, um, yeah, so so on. You tell me what you think about it. Oh, I'm sorry. The bezel on this one, this is black ceramic with gold leaf numbers, no loom. This is a blue ceramic, scratch resistant, of course, uh, and this has loom on the numbers. Again, I'll get into the loom. It's a combination of C3 and BGW9 on all of them, uh, so you just have to check it out in the loom when we get to that portion. But here's the blue dial with the yellow accents. I'll come up a little bit better so you can see the waffle texture, chapter ring, with the markings on it, and it looks, this is smoking. I like this one too. I like it, I like it, I like it. Last one. This is the one I was, you know, we were going through a phase during design, and these were designed, you know, probably over a year ago or so. Um, just for reference, we've had these in stock. I think, well, not in stock, they've been in the warehouse Towards the end of the third quarter last year, they've just been sitting waiting to get released. We have them all stacked up uh, waiting to get released. 
uh, the the uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday really kind of you know put a, uh, threw a wrench into everything, I guess. So this is the Pogue one. Now, maybe it's not that bad. It's a golden dial a waffle, and this one has a sapphire bezel insert. We're looking at a Pepsi. It's blue over red. Cool red feature as the triangle. That's really sweet. Now, this is a sapphire bezel insert. So what you're looking at is red and blue paint going down. The numbers are stenciled out, and then a loom application behind it so the numbers will glow in the dark. The uh, indices themselves are plated red. Provides a nice contrast to color. The bezel, uh, this is another gold bezel, just like the first one, right? Got it. Matches well. And then I learned my lesson on the last golden dial I did, uh, which was the Calabro. The hands on this are done in contrasting silver. So they pop really, really well. Amazing depth on it. It looks fantastic. Again, just not my favorite color of the bunch. Maybe you guys will disagree. Uh, we do have, I think, one more Pogue colorway and another model coming out. And then I think I'm done with my, <laughs> I'm done with my Pogue introspection, I guess. So that's that one. That's all four. Let's, um, let's do a wrist. Uh, I'll do it while I'm talking to you because, you know, why not, right? I have everything here. I uh, will do the blue one. I will take off my brew one. And here we go. Okay, still too big. I'm like a six and a half inch, inch wrist now. Six and a half, six and three quarter. So I would probably remove at least three more links, I would say. So there it is below the bone. Here it is above. That's what I can watch, right? Look at the color blue matches. Ah, matches my, my sweatshirt. Really, really nice. Okay, let's get into the loom. As I mentioned, we did, a, we did some play, we had a little bit of fun, did the GMT hand, a different color. I don't remember which is which, so I, maybe we'll just light them all up and you'll see what they do. Just take note that these two, the bezels, do not loom, so don't look for those bezels to loom. Okay, starting on the left, this was the uh, black and gold. You'll notice C3, hands and indices. The GMT hand is tipped in BGW Niner blue. Uh, this is the white with the stainless steel insert. BGW 9 hands and indices. GMT hand done in C3 green. Uh, I, this is the um, blue dial. We are looking at BGW 9 hands, indices, and bezel, right? Bezel, BGW 9, yeah, I think so. Might be green. No, I think it's green actually. And the GMT hand, no, no, it's blue. And the GMT tip is green. And then the last one is the sapphire, uh, green, blue, blue. That's it. But they look great, very easy to tell at the time. And that's going to do it for us here today. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you the Islander Waffle GMT. Come and get them. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Questions, comments, concerns, queries, anything else you want to say, put it down below. I'll be sure to address it as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.